Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another Madden 17 online game. The Indianapolis Colts will be kicking off the AFC South portion of the 32 team preview series for the upcoming NFL season. And the Indianapolis Colts are a team that has had some pretty high expectations since they drafted Andrew Luck with the number one overall pick in the 2012 draft. Andrew Luck was... The future, they cut Peyton Manning to draft Luck and make him the franchise quarterback. And from there, people expected the Colts to pretty much win the AFC South every single year. It was a pretty easy, easy division. And early on, they got playoff appearances. And, you know, people were expecting them to take the next step. And the furthest they got was pretty much going against the Patriots. And then they would lose to the Patriots in the playoffs. But lately, they haven't even made the playoffs anymore. It's been the, the AFC South has been the Houston Texans division. And the Colts have kind of lagged back. Andrew Luck was hurt a couple of seasons ago. And really, their roster is just not up to par. And, you know, the quarterback position is fine. Andrew Luck's been one of the best quarterbacks since he's been drafted. And he's steadily improving. I thought last year he was really good considering what was around him. The problem is, what is around the Indianapolis Colts? And when you talk about that, you got to look at the GM, Ryan Grixon. And Grixon is no longer with the team. He got fired because of the lack of pieces on this draft. But it's really just everything when you look at it for the Indianapolis Colts. The draft went bad since Grixon's been around. Besides the 2012 draft, free agency has gone awful. They haven't really brought in anyone. They've more so lost pieces than brought in key contributors. And for some reason, their formula in free agency for the Colts the last couple of years under Grixon was bringing in old guys who are already washed up. Whether you're talking about... Uh, like Jeff Saturday was brought in for a year. They brought in Trent Cole. Frank Gore is the running back right now. Really big names, but not playing the way they used to in their prime because they're old now. And then when you look at the draft, the 2012 draft was stellar for the Colts. They got Luck. They got T.Y. Hilton in the third round. They got Dwayne Allen in the third round as well. They even got Vic Ballard, who was a contributor for a couple years. But after that, it's been pretty, pretty bad. The 2013 draft in particular, drafting Bajon Warner in the first round and, and everyone on this list in the 2013 draft, none of these guys really contribute for the team. So the first round of the NFL draft is really important because it's hard to mess it up. There's a lot of big time players that you get for your team that if they're not going to be pro bowlers, can at least be yearly contributors on a solid basis for your team every single year. And the Colts haven't really gone too much of that. The 2014 draft in the first round, they didn't have their pick. You know why? Because they traded it away to get Trent Richardson. That did not work, as you know by now, at all. 2015 draft, first round. Philip Dorsett. Looked like a speedster. Looked like he could make something happen. But one, when he got drafted, it was not a position of need. It was just a random, hey, let's get Philip Dorsett on the team as well. Didn't make much sense when they needed a lot of help on their offensive line, their defense. And then on top of that, Philip Dorsett hasn't been too good since he was drafted. At least the 2014 draft, when you look at who they actually did draft, uh, they got Jack Muhor. He's been a good guard for them. Dante Moncrief, he's actually been pretty good for them. And Newsom's made a couple of contributions. Though going back to the 2015 draft, you know, a lot. none of these guys have really been star contributors for the Indianapolis Colts. The 2016 draft, even so, no one's really made a lot of noise out of this draft. Ryan Kelly was pretty solid. Their first-round pick, at least they hit on a first-round pick for once in the 2016 draft. But besides that, even then, none of these guys really making noise on this squad. Um, Larry and Clark, I believe his name is, the dude that got drafted an uh, offensive tackle in the third round last year. Uh, he was not too good. We'll see if he can improve this year because... The right side of the Indianapolis Colts offense line is bad. But yeah, that's you're wondering what happened to the Indianapolis Colts and why they're not that good of a team and what, what happened to them, basically. That is it. That's why. That's, that's how you get fired as a GM. And there was a long leash for him, and he's finally gone because... It, it's been a year too late, but they, they try to trust the process, I guess, and it just didn't work out. They still kept Chuck Bugano, and we'll see how that works out for them. Chuck basically is given a pardon this year, saying, yeah, you know what? Grayson screwed up. We'll give you a new GM and see if he can still coach this team and make a playoff push. And if he doesn't, I think there's a lot of thoughts that Chuck Pagano's probably going to get fired at the end of the year. So this could be a make it or break a year. We'll see how he responds to it, see how his team responds. Unfortunately, though, looking at the roster, the remains of the Ryan Grigson era, it's it's messy. Starting off with the running game. The running game, I think Frank Gore is still the projected running back. And Frank Gore, I probably like 33 years old at this point. I love me Frank Gore, man. I thought Frank Gore was fantastic. It's always fun to watch in the 49ers because he's a bruising running back. He always knew his running lanes, always running behind that good offensive line during his later years with the Niners. And 
coming on the Colts, right? there's not much of a good offensive line. There's not much of a good Frank Gore, to be quite frank. And even then, the running back depth, there's not too much to really smile about. They got Robert Turbin on the roster. They drafted Marlon Mack out of South Florida in the fourth round this year. Um, they had Christian Michael, but I think he's already like out for the year. So I don't think he even counts as really being on their roster since he's on IR. So the running back position is a huge question mark. The right side of the offensive line is a huge question mark. The left side, you got Costanza, who's been good for a while, and Muhort since he get, was drafted, pretty good good ryan kelly he wasn't getting torched so there is that like cork on the right side so hopefully that you know left tackle left guard center combo can be good but the right guard and right tackle positions are huge question marks for the colts entering the season and they need to figure out that offensive line at some point because Andrew Luck continuously gets beaten up, continuously is one of the most sacked quarterbacks in the league we saw him break down a couple of seasons ago he's got these shoulder injuries and you can't get your franchise quarterback beaten up. We all thought Cam Newton was invincible, but, you know, after a while of not having a good offensive line, Cam, he was pretty beaten up last season, and that's the, what's going on with Andrew Luck as well. He's really been beaten up lately, so, I mean, they really got to protect this guy because he's a star in the league. At least their passing game is probably going to be pretty good again since T.Y. Hilton is... You know, definitely one of the better wide receivers out there. He's very small, but, you know, he's fast in two senses. He's fast straight line speed, and he's fast with the ball in his hands, and he makes good moves once he has the ball in his hands. Always fun to watch T.Y. after they catch, watch him give a little head fake or something like that. Dante Moncrie's been pretty solid for them. Um, Philip Dorsett, if he could provide something, that would be big. He's probably going to be playing outside since they like putting T.Y. in the slot. They got Kamar Aiken in free agency. I thought that was a pretty good pickup. I think Kamar Aiken could be a solid potential third string receiver for them, Sir playing Dorsett in the starting lineup. They got Jack Doyle coming back into the tight end spot this year, and um, they don't have Dwayne Allen anymore. More. Dwayne Allen got traded away, but Doyle was pretty solid for them last year. Doyle, you know, stepped up to the plate when Dwayne Allen was hurt as usual and stuff like that. And they got him, they got Swoop, so it should be a good passing game. The Colts passing game was up there as one of the top passing games last season, and it worked out for them. Problem was, everything else wasn't that good. The running game was one of the worst in the NFL, and unfortunately, like I said, it doesn't look like it's really going to improve. We'll see if I don't. I they, they gotta find something besides Frank Gore to really improve that running game. If you ask me, I just Frank Gore had over a thousand yards last season. Don't get me wrong, but it's just they could do better. They they can do better than that. And then we go to the defensive side of football. We haven't even touched the defensive side. Their passing game was pretty much a joke last year, and this year in the draft they really tried to fix that, and it's a point of concern. And they smartly attacked it with the first two picks. In their draft with Malik Hooker at the safety spot, that could be a big-time pick. A lot of people think that Hooker could be a star for this team. I mean, he came out of a big-time college, so that's part of the reason why there's a lot of hype around him. But, you know, he'll be starting next to Clayton Getters this season at the safety spots. I doubt they're really going to start anybody besides Malik Hooker since, you know, first-round pick and all, and they don't have anybody else on the team. And then they got Quincy Wilson at the cornerback spot. They're hoping that he can be a solid number two next to Vontae Davis. And if he is, that would be great. Though we also need Vontae Davis to be the number one cornerback for the Colts. Because last year, he was a little bit banged up. And he wasn't really himself. So, hopefully it was just an off year for Vontae. That was one of the few really good moves that the Colts made ever since drafting Andrew Luck. Trading that second round pick for Vontae Davis. That was a steal. Because he's been a Pro Bowl quarterback ever since. A cornerback, I mean. I think I said quarterback. But, you know, he, I don't know what that trade was about. But it definitely was not the move. But, you know, Vontae's there. Hopefully Wilson can contribute. Hooker. Um, we'll see what Getters can do. Um... I really, I, I never really saw him play too much, but from what I saw, he wasn't too bad. So hopefully, it's a decent secondary next year. Because last year, this was one of the worst secondaries as far as forcing turnovers. The defensive line is extremely average. Their linebacking core extremely average. They lost to Quell Jackson, who was one of their leading tacklers last year. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's not a bad group of guys. Henry Anderson looked like probably the best defensive um, lineman there last year for the Colts. They picked up Jonathan Hankins in free agency. Um, as a Giants fan, not too big of a fan of Jonathan Hankins, especially the contract that he got. But he can be a solid rotation piece, help them stop the run down there and even get a little bit of a pass rush. They picked up some solid guys in free agency. Jabal Shear, Akeem Ayers. These are not bad names to have on your defensive line. It's just that... You know, they're really going to have to work together to make something happen, get some sacks on the board because the Colts' pass rush was another thing that wasn't good last year. So, you know, the Colts this year, they're, this is one of those teams that their draft class can really shape up how their season goes. They can get these guys 
their first three picks were defensive players. They also drafted Terrell Basham out of Ohio. So uh, those guys can really come in and contribute. And even some of last year's draft picks, like TJ Green comes in. Uh, the car guy I mentioned, he comes in and plays a big-time role. It can definitely lead the Colts to win the AFC South. The problem for the Colts is, though, since they were winning the AFC South, this division has improved a lot. The Texans have maybe the best defense in the NFL still. The Titans are a team on the rise with Mariota and that offensive line and that smash-mouth running game. And even the Jacksonville Jaguars, they're building up that defensive side of football. So because of that, I just don't think this is the year for the Colts to reclaim the AFC South. Looking at their schedule, I feel like they're going to go somewhere between 6-10 and 10 and 7-9. and nine. I just don't see it for them this year. Even though I, I'm still a big fan of Andrew Luck, I just, looking at this team, looking at their schedule, I, I, I see somewhere between, you know, 9 to even 11 losses on that schedule. I just don't think, you know, the Colts for the longest time have not been able to beat teams outside the AFC South, and I just don't think that changes this year, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section, Colts fans. Let me know why you guys think you could turn the corner, if you guys think that, you know, maybe this year's draft class can spark you guys, or what you guys are feeling this year, if you guys have a high-flying offense that's going to take the next step this year. Let me know if you guys think you guys can make a playoff run this season. Um, like, leave a like in the video if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, and I will catch you guys next time.